Can you even call yourself a fancy book reviewer if you haven't read The Way of Kings? Hi everyone and welcome to my very first book review on this channel. And today we are reviewing a big one, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Now this book has been on my TBR for way too long. And I was really confident that I was gonna love this book. So confident that I actually bought The Way of Kings in paperback, in hardcover, with an additional art card. And yes, I also bought the Way of Kings in Leather Bounds before I had even read the book. How gorgeous is this? I also have a digital copy which I paid only a pound for. The reason why I was so confident I was going to love this book is because Mistborn is one of my all-time favorite series. And reviewers that I really trust, such as Patrick Leo, said that the Stormlight Archive was even better than Mistborn. So, is The Way of Kings the best book I've ever read? No. But let's talk more about it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this video will be totally spoiler free. I'll only mention some character names, so if you consider that a spoiler, then please click away now. The Way of Kings is definitely one of the most hyped up books in the fantasy community. It currently has the number one spot of being the most popular fantasy series on the fantasy subreddit. It is more popular than the Middle Earth universe, more popular than Game of Thrones or the Wheel of Time. And this series doesn't even have an adaptation. And The Way of Kings also has more than 360,000 ratings and currently has an average rating star of 4.6, which is just insane. I also asked you over on Instagram if you had read the book and if you had, would you consider The Way of Kings in your top five favorite fantasy books? And 82% of you said yes, you would consider this in your top five favorite fantasy books. I also asked if you thought The Way of Kings was overhyped and 80% of you said no. But I find it quite interesting that 20% said yes. Is The Way of Kings overhyped? Kinda. The only reason why I'm saying that The Way of Kings is slightly overhyped is because of the first third of the book, or the first 400 pages. Now let me explain. I didn't really feel that hooked until around the 400 page mark. That doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy reading it. There's a lot of intriguing world building from the first chapters and also really great characterizations. The first 400 pages were just a bit slow. Now I don't mind a slow burn and I actually think that Sanderson did a fantastic job at slowly introducing the reader to this massive epic world. And when you're telling a story at this scale, then you really need to go slow. So I definitely understand why Sanderson took his time in the first third of the book to really build up the characters and build up the world. I can just imagine that some readers will feel a bit disappointed by the slow start of the book. Personally, I didn't mind. But my enjoyment of the book definitely increased as I read more and more of the book. A bit like this graph. That being said, The Way of Kings is definitely one of the best books I've ever read. And you should definitely read it as well if you haven't. So why does this book have a 4.6 star rating on Goodreads? Let's talk about it. Firstly, this book has like seven prologues and preludes. Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but it does have a prologue and a prelude, something that I've never seen before. So this book starts with a prelude where we follow a character called Yestrian and Kalek. And you hear them talk about an oath pact. I didn't really understand what was going on, but it was intriguing. And then we have the prologue, which I thought was really, really good. Although it was a bit confusing. <laughs> Although I was a bit confused about what was going on with this character Seth, I thought it was a really, really strong introduction to the series. In the prologue, you already have an assassin that is trying to kill a king. So the stakes are incredibly high already in the prologue. You also get insight to some of Seth's inner struggles, and there's also some things that are hinted at. Now this character set doesn't have a major role in the first book. The Way of Kings is structured into different sections or parts and then you have the preludes in between these parts. And I believe in every prelude you also get to see this character Seth that you meet in the prologue. All I can say is that this character Seth seems to be a badass and also really terrifying. And it also seems like this character will have a bigger role later on in the series. So let's talk about our main characters, Kaladin, Shalan and Dalinar. Now I know there are other characters such as Adeline and Navani. But just to keep this review a bit more simple, I'm just going to focus on the main three characters. Let's start with my favorite character so far, Kaladin. I absolutely love an underdog in my stories. So we get introduced to Kaladin as he's sold into slavery and is forced to join the army. And then we have these flashbacks going throughout the whole book, which work so well. We get insight into Kaladin's past, his family life, and we see how he went from a position of privilege to ending up in slavery and now fighting in an army against his own will. These flashbacks were amazing. I loved every chapter that had a flashback. And I would also argue that Kaladin has the strongest character arc in The Way of Kings. 
You see this character growing so much throughout the whole book. We see Kaladin from a young age until he's an adult and his arc is just phenomenal. And the Bridge 4 crew is so, so good. If you read the book, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the book, then just read The Way of Kings so you can experience the Bridge 4 crew. I love the banter and I love the friendships that were formed. I really, really hope that Kaladin has a major role in Words of Radiance because I just loved his character. And you can't argue with me that Kaladin isn't the best character in The Way of Kings. My opinion might change about him when I read the other books, but for now, Kaladin takes the crown. Then we have Shalan, a character I also really enjoyed following. I've heard that some people find her character boring, or that people also hate her for some reason. I haven't read the other books yet, but judging from The Way of Kings, I don't really see a major reason for hating her just yet. So Shalan is a scholar that is chasing brightness Yasna Kulin. And her plan is to steal Yasna's soul caster and then replace it with her family's broken soul caster. And she does this because her family is in major financial problems. I think, judging just from the Way of Kings, that there are a lot of good reasons to really, really like Shalan. Shalan is a very complex character and it's just so fascinating to see how she's trying to overcome all of these barriers that she's facing. And the dynamic between Yasna Kalin and Shalan was just so good. You constantly have this power struggle going on. Yasna Kalin constantly pushes Shalan to her uttermost limits. Sanderson also does a phenomenal job at analyzing really deep themes such as morality, religion, and the meaning of life through the character of Shalan. It's also really interesting considering that Sanderson comes from a religious background himself, that he isn't afraid to tackle these really difficult questions about religion, meaning of life. So Shalan gets a thumbs up from me. Then we have Dalinar Kalin, a king and a former shardbearer. Or at least I think he's a king. A prince? He's a guy with authority. Now I'm not saying that Dalinar's character is bad, but out of the characters Kaladin, Shalan and Dalinar, I found Dalinar to be the least interesting character of those three. That being said, the character work is still pretty fantastic. So Dalinar is having these visions and people around him are suspecting that he's going mad. While he used to be a famous warlord and a fighter, he now seeks to end the war and unite Alektar. I think my main issue, if you can call it that issue, is that I didn't find the visions that interesting. I can definitely see that on a reread that these visions will make much more sense and it will also be much more interesting. Also, the politics was pretty good, but it just didn't interest me as much as Kaladin's and Shalan's plotlines. However, the ending definitely made Dalinar a much more interesting character. I've heard a lot of people say that Dalinar is their favorite character and that Oathbringer really changed their mind about this character. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen in book three. And out of those three characters, I'll probably give Kaladin a five star rating and then Shalan a 4.5 star rating, and then Dalinar a 4 star rating. So those are really high ratings coming from me. Now let's talk about the world building. You know that Sanderson is famous for his epic world building, and the scale of this world is more epic than any of his previous works. The world of Roshar feels so epic and so huge. There are so many different locations, and Sanderson has also created various races. If I understand it correctly, then you have these high storms that create stormlight, and Stormlight is like an energy that you can store, right? If I understand it correctly, then you can store this Stormlight in like weapons, which makes them really, really powerful. Don't judge me too harshly. I'm sure I'll understand everything soon. And then we have this class system where light eyes are the superior class and dark eyes are the peasants. And this world is rich with lore and history. When you're reading this book, you just feel like there's so much to explore. And that is such a phenomenal feeling, isn't it? We fancy readers, we read because of books like The Way of Kings. There's nothing like stepping into an epic and exciting world and just experiencing it for the first time. Sanderson has created the perfect storm when it comes to The Way of Kings. You have four elements that make this book such a success. You have accessible writing, you have terrific characters, you have epic world building, and then you have Brandon Sanderson himself. When these four elements come together, you get a book like The Way of Kings, and it's just beautiful. Wait, who are these characters supposed to be? Is this Dalinar? Kaladin? The Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson made me fall in love with fantasy, and is one of my all-time favorite series. It has a very special place in my heart. However, I can actually see the Stormlight Archive taking that place, which almost feels like blasphemy to me. People say that Words of Radiance is the best book in the series, 
so I absolutely can't wait to read it. Is The Way of Kings a perfect book? No. As mentioned, it does have a slow start. The Way of Kings isn't perfect, but it's pretty close. So for now, I'm giving this book a 4.5 star rating out of 5 stars. However, after having read the whole series, I can imagine that my mind will maybe change about this book. I might even increase it to a 5 star rating at that point. It's just because I don't understand all the foreshadowing. I don't really understand what's going on. But when I have read the other books, then this book will probably make even more sense and I'll probably also enhance my experience of this book. I am so happy to finally have started the Stormlight Archive and I absolutely can't wait to continue. I might make a prediction video of what I'm expecting to happen in Words of Radiance. If that's something that you're interested in, then let me know. Thank you for watching and thank you again for your support. I really appreciate it.